And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here, and you are there. At least I hope you're there, because <clears throat> if you're not there, how could you watch us? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Yeah. Hello. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. Progressive warriors unite for Bernie Sanders. Hey. Feel the burn. Hey. The West Coast is burning. B-E-R-N-I-N-G. The West Coast is burning. It better. I salute the California primary and the progressive warriors on the West Coast have proven that they are true progressive warriors unlike other parts of the country. I am very proud of the people on the west coast of the United States. Go west coast. West coast is burning. California primary. I salute you. I salute Californians and everything we speak about here on Progressive Discussions is part of our series Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Listen to that conch energy from the briny deep and um, it looks like gee it looks like uh, <laughs> Madam Secretary hey. uh, the uh, Gorgon Medusa uh, witch uh, Shillery uh, Clinton Shil Shillery Robum Clinton <laughs> um, hey turned her nose up at the at the people of California turned her nose towards the people away from the people of California looks down on them with her nose up in the air and trivializes them and trivializes claims, there's 400 and some delegates and and acts arrogantly acts like she doesn't need to uh, be approved by the people of California well she said she's already won so. No ma and she also said no matter what happens in California exactly. she's already won so if that's not if that's not uh, being snooty towards California I don't know what it is but she's uh, she's counting her pre uh, convention uh, chickens before they're hatched the, we're talking about the Democratic uh, National Convention and uh, super delegate Right, which some states yeah. are, are are wisely getting rid of uh, because of the problem it's causing. And um, look, yeah, stealing the vote, the no democracy. Look, that's what it's causing. There's there's a petition floating around. Before I begin my monologue, there's a petition floating around, trying to get President Barack Obama to really investigate all this voter fraud that's uh. going on with the uh, Democratic primaries in these states. That's like asking the fox to guard the hen house. You're expecting one corporatist establishment Democrat to expose and bring down another corporatist establishment Democrat. Mm. And if you remember, Bernie Sanders said many times, I am not only up against the right wing uh -huh. of the Republican Party, I am up against the entire establishment Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Because they're both the same. He said it. And 
first I, I read articles that Barack Obama is was supporting Deborah Wasserman uh, shits uh, either for re-election or in general. Yeah, re-election. And now the man that was that sounded like he was supporting Bernie Sanders now Joe Biden, Joe Pre Vice President Joe Biden, is supporting Deborah Wasserman, Wasserman Schultz, mm -hmm. arm in arm. Okay. And on top of all that, speaking of establishment Democrats, Robert Reich is saying that that uh, uh, Bernie Sanders supporters, if Hillary gets the nomination, should work very hard at supporting Hillary Clinton. Here's a man that was also giving kudos after kudos after kudos for Bernie Sanders. And now and why he... Can't, why can't... Why can't the uh, Bernie Sanders people uh, uh, write in. <laughs> I mean, they don't have to vote for Hillary. <laughs> I mean, you know, they can write in. Work Bernie. very hard. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even. <laughs> I wouldn't even do a favor the size of a paramecium or an amoeba or a molecule for Hillary Clinton. Let what alone he, work hard what, for her. What he's saying is basically is. We don't want Trump. He's worried about the party. No, we don't want Trump. He he's paranoid about he's Hillary, paranoid about Trump. Yeah, because if you don't vote for Hillary, Trump gets in. Well, the the polls. Uh, we the don't po need another uh, Republican. Now the polls are unanimously showing that Bernie Sanders yes. is the much more powerful candidate against Trump to beat Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton, and That's I agree. Correct. That's correct. Now uh, Robert Reich. <sighs> You know what? I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, we're talking about establish, uh, obviously establishment Democrats. Mayor Bill de Blasio used to be pro Bernie Sanders, and, and then he did a flip flop sellout. Flip flop. Flip -flop. And you have all the, you have many, many. Hey, Bernie Sanders even mentioned it's not just congressmen and senators that are part of the establishment. Uh, Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. It is mayors and governors. Mm -hmm. he, he also mentioned that, that he's against all establishment Democrats. Yes. Because if they're for Hillary, they're establishment Democrats. Yeah. You know, Barbara and, Boxer. and <clears throat> Barbara, oh, yeah. the ugly Barbara Boxer, uh, uh, um, Nancy Pussface Pelosi, that's her new nickname, Pussface. Oh uh, Pelosi, these are all establishment mm -hmm. Democrats, uh, Democrats, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> the, see they graduated from blue dog moderates to Democrats, uh, and and just like who the hell said it that there are the Democratic Party today are are basically moderate Republicans. Who the fuck? Somebody very important made that statement. I don't think they're moderate. I think they are center-right Republicans. You know, it, 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 though, it, trying to put a, a label on these people is 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 exactly. hard because remember, Rudy Giuliani used to call himself a liberal Republican. How That's do you, how correct. can you be a liberal Republican? He used to be. <laughs> what do you think Dwight Eisenhower was? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe with Dwight Eisenhower. There was once upon a time liberals in both parties, conservatives in both parties. Well, Richard, in both Ri parties. Richard Nixon would be considered uh, uh, too much to the left for today's yes. Republican yes, Party. Richard Nixon wanted to institute an annual income. No, then they wouldn't. They wouldn't accept him. Oh today. my God, they wouldn't accept him. They listen. They, they wouldn't, wouldn't even accept the real Ronald Reagan today. The original Ronald Reagan, That's they wouldn't correct. accept. You're right. That is correct. Because, I mean, the original Ronald Reagan, who was, I believe, the governor of California, was also the president of the Screen Actors Guild, which is a union. So Ronald Reagan, before he got brainwashed and into being a completely corporatist, you know, he was, uh... Well, he was always a corporatist. I mean, he, but he, he was in the middle, He worked right. for GE. He worked for, uh, Borax. 
You know, it's, what was that, 20 mule team? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. And, 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 and the, uh, uh, yeah, he worked for all of them, you know, corporations. You know, right. But he wasn't, well, look at poor, poor little crybaby weeper of the house got the boot. He got kicked out, John, <laughs> John Boehner. Uh, I'm surprised John Boehner has not been interviewed recently and has not publicly just to spite the people that fired him publicly right. told the truth endorsed anyone and told the truth see this is the same th situation as Barack Obama now if I was the first let's just pretend if I was the first uh, African-American president and I spent the last eight years uh, of, of getting uh, uh, beaten up and bombarded with obstructionism and racism, blatant racism, and I, and I would be very, very uh, um, headstrong and determined into making the perpetrator's life, to the best of my ability, a living hell. I would tell all in interview after interview after interview. You would think John Boehner would do the same, but apparently not. Like if somebody's out to well, get least, me. At least Obama did not become like Bill Clinton, wanting to work with Newt Gingrich just to get something done. Well, Bill Clinton, See? yeah, for the sake of getting something done. Right. Bill Clinton, that, that's what Hillary sounds like. She wants to get things mm -hmm. done, but what she doesn't explain that the, the getting things done is a, a bipartisanship compromise, uh, maybe. Yeah, I, because she believes only certain things can get done. Certainly not uh, 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 universal health care, certainly not free tuition for college and, and, and school, etc. No, those things can't be done. They can be done in what, 11, 12, or 13 other industrialized nations, but not the richest country in the world. Well, Obamacare was a sort of a, no, it was a compromise. Obamacare was a compromise because... It's written by the corporation. Because, right, and the health insurance companies are not in any danger, per se. They're not, in, uh, they're not being hurt. No, and they're raising all their rates. Right. So, wh what is so? What they lose? But what's so? Yeah. What's so damn horrible about Obamacare that <laughs> the Republicans are squawking about? I don't see any. I mean, uh, it's a um, job killer. Job killer. Oh, I want to read something comical. Oh boy. But real. This is from uh, New State of New Jersey. Work for work first. They used to call it workforce, I think. Work first program um, for people that are collecting uh, cash assistance, SNAP, which is food stamps, Medicaid, and whatever, and for the unemployed. They they make you go to all these dumb workshops mm. and and listen to this uh, government mumbo jumbo. Okay, and. Um, then they tell you, um, they tell people, oh, you can go back to school and uh, the, the government will pay up to $4,000 for you to go back to school. Mm -hmm. That's providing that, that you could find a marketable in-demand occupation skill that will take the $4,000. There's not many that will. Most uh, technical technical schools want like 10, 15,000, but from what I understand, instead of lose money, they take the four grand. Now when they say up to four grand, it's really four grand because I don't think too many schools are going to take less. Mm -hmm. And then when you graduate, they have this a job placement agency in the school with employee, employee, employment specialists that give you the same bullshit that the government gives you about how to write a resume, how to go on an interview, blah, blah, blah. And um, they claim to get you placed in an entry-level position when you're fresh out of school. 
no companies today want to hire entry-level people they want experience plus the diploma or the certificate and uh, or the H1 a or H1B and, and they import that's what they do they import the uh, immigrants to work cheap mm. cheaper so you know oh and they have uh, if you're a senior you if you're in your last um, um, what the fuck they call it? I drew I drew a blank if you're in your last semester uh -huh. of school that's the word I'm looking for yeah, and the last semester of life yeah <laughs> they have a thing where if you work as an intern for a company you get school credits but what happens is that when you graduate these companies get an, a new set of senior inter, uh, I mean of interns in their last graduating semester mm -hmm. and then they graduate and then they get another set so what they're doing is they're getting free labor from all these interns that are in school on their last semester nice racket huh so you got the h1b immigrants coming in working cheap you got the interns from school working for free mm -hmm. slaves you get you have whatever jobs american jobs have been outsourced and are still being outsourced you have uh, free slave labor in privatized prisons which uh what's that the guy's name cotton what's his name joe cotton republican guy with a yeah, scrawny a, neck and a beard yeah he's a, he's a uh, he's a he, he's a Republican, yes. He, he says not. Uh, 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 not enough people are being locked up in what? America. More should be locked 2. up. 2.2 million, more than any other country in the world. No, what he, what he Even wants... Russia! What, he, well, what he's doing is he's sucking dick of the, of the corporate CEOs. Of course. And he wants to provide them with more slave labor. Of course. You see that judge went to jail for doing that. Listen. The capitalist system of the United States has become so corrupt and it's becoming more corrupt because the Democratic Party is totally shot to hell now thanks to Deborah Wasserman Schultz and two other people that I don't are not a household name but there are three people that supposedly screwed over the Democratic Party part of the DMC DNC well, Clinton did his share Clinton did his share to totally gut out whatever was left to help the little guy yeah. uh, and all the, th the shenanigans he pulled. Hey, he could have turned around and told Newt Gingrich to go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. He could have told him, get lost, buddy. But Who no, no, he had to work with him, right? Yeah. He had to choose. He didn't have to, but he chose to work with Newt Gingrich. Yeah. So he, so he signed away Glass-Steagall. He, he, he created NAFTA. He gutted out the welfare system as we know it. <laughs> and uh, Hillary, there's nothing progressive about Hillary Clinton. No. The only thing, the only thing... There's nothing progressive about the Democratic Party. The only, the only thing she has are um, a specific number of... Uh, very foolish, idiotic, politically correct people and lesbians mm. that are obsessed with having the first woman in the White House. They want to make history. That's all they care about. Uh, I mean, Barack Obama was the first African American president that, and, and that made history. How did that work out? But, but, uh, Ralph Nader says right from day one. He's an Uncle Tom. Yeah, well, you see the race... He's a corporatist. The race relations today are, you know, as bad as they ever were. And when the media heard Ralph Nader say that, they said, oh, that's it, Ralph Nader's political career is done. Ah, uh, he's a spoiler, yeah, come on. Ah, racist, racism, hey, racism, racism, racism. racism. Right. You know, they, Hillary plays the gender card. You know, oh, the, the damsel in distress, how dare the... The mean man criticized me. I'm the woman, and she she plays the gender card. The um, 
other people play the race card. Um, you know, it's like uh, mm -hmm. every every lobbying group that has selfish agendas plays their card. Mm -hmm. It's called the guilt trip. Is what it's what our mothers, girlfriends, and wives have been doing for uh, eons, laying the uh, guilt trip, and that's what the the, the so-called cards are. Right? It's a guilt trip. It, it works on you, you psychologically. Okay, here we go. Workforce programming. And let me read the title under it because you're going to chuckle. <laughs> the dignity of work. The pride of independence. <laughs> chuckle, chuckle. So, in other words, they're psychologically trying to psych you into not being on the dole. Yes, they want to make a... a, a they want to... Why would you want to be a moocher? So if you're of your dignity, uh, so if you're not working, you, you shouldn't have any dignity. That's great. And if you're not independent of somebody helping you, you shouldn't have any pride. That's what they're saying by this but title, they, right? <laughs> but how come they never state the obvious? Why is it dignified, prideful, to work for someone else and make him rich and get and be exploited by working for someone else working long hours for little pay and no benefits yeah. uh, uh helping him get or her get rich helping right. them get helping yeah. the CEO get richer than they already are how is that how is that full of pride and dignity mm -hmm. tell me that you know, and then it goes on. You know, to uh, if you're if you have a if your physician if you feel your physician can make you exempt from this uh, job search program, hey, hey. it says um, here. Um, Does the patient require behavioral health or substance abu abuse treatment? Yes oh or no. Boy. Do any of the above diagnosis limit the patient's ability to participate in gainful? employment and or occupational training yes or no gainful yeah like like you got with the high cost of living you're gonna gain yeah, 7 from 25 an hour is from, gainful. from that 725 oh you're gonna gain yeah <laughs> you're gonna gain your boss's dick up your ass is that what you're gonna gain uh, if no please specify the date when you expect that the patient will be able to engage in any gainful employment or and or occupational uh, as training. As soon as he grows two more arms or legs. In other words, they're nagging you to become gainfully employed. Yes. They're, yes. they're, they're bugging you is what they're doing. Do you expect the patient's barriers to uh, employment and training to last longer than six months, 12 months? And then there's a question mark. What about forever? Oh, heaven Till death do us part. Heaven forbid, right? Hey, if, uh, like, I, I did I say this last week? I, I think I, I don't know if I saw it on video and it cracked me to hell. Sometimes I crack myself up. If you are a disabled person with no arms, and you can type a hundred words a minute with your nose like a woodpecker. Yeah, then you're gainfully, you're not disabled anymore. If you get a job. If you can hold, you get it, you have to get the job, then you have to hold the job. Yeah. It's like when Jerry Fine Seinfeld says, I don't think you know anything about uh, car rentals. Yeah. You know how to take the reservation, but you don't know how to hold the reservation because they didn't have his car uh -huh. that he, that he, um, he reserved. He reserved. Yeah. They try to stick them with a smaller car. Anyway, you know, I mean, you have to not only get the job, but you have to hold the job. But once you do get the job, you are no longer disabled under the Social Security law, KIDA. KIDA. K-I-D-D-A, yes. Oh, and oh, you really have to thank all those disabled people that are in the Special Olympics. Oh. We are Invicta. Yes. Invicta. Like I told you, oh, you're a uh, Mel Torme says to Kramer on Seinfeld. Oh, you're in, you're an independent fella. You live alone. That's good. That's good. He was full of Novocaine. 
He thought he was mentally challenged. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you live alone. Oh, you're an independent fella. Wonderful, wonderful. That's good. Very that's, what they, that's what the rich want. Oh, yeah. So anyway, before we begin, I just want to read this over again because it cracks me up. New Jersey, work first. The dignity of work. The pride of independence. Yes. Yes. See, it's all a sight game. To and, and and the same thing goes for the roadblocks they throw in front of you if you're poor. They try hard to get you to hell off. But heaven forbid the rich get bailouts and subsidies and Wall Street gets free money. Oh, oh they're not moochers, huh? No, they're job producers. They're not moochers. In China and India. If you're, if you're a baby, if you're a, an embryo uh, or a fetus in the womb, you're as valuable as all hell. Oh, gold, baby, gold. You're better than gold, platinum. But once you're born, you're a moocher. Yeah. You are a moocher. Don't bother me once they're born. You're a moocher. Capitalism in a conch shell, brother. Can you dig that conch? Anyway, I cannot. I can never salute the people of the West Coast too much. I will salute them again. <laughs> All three states: Washington, Oregon, and now California. Well, Washington and Oregon are done, right? Yeah, burn. They're, they're, it's Sanders country. Okay. The Sanders country. Well, as it stands, including the super delegates. The delegates. Uh, Clinton has over 2,200, and Bernie has 1,500 and something. Yeah, given to her on a silver platter, of course. So, how many does New Jersey have? I don't know, but I expect a lot of assholes here in our state. Um, probably. I see. I don't know because I hear Bernie's doing well in 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 our state. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah but I'm I'm saying. Oh, I don't know I'm, how many I'm delegates. I'm trying to figure the delegates. I think it's under 100. But in California, it's a well over 400 or something. So that would be, About let's, say, let's say 500, and add it to Bernie's 1,500. Then... He still won't have enough. Right, but then what Bernie's hoping is that a lot of superdelegates will change their mind. Yes. And, f and switch to Bernie Sanders, which they have a right to do. Now, um... Uh, of course, the, f the, the, the most fair election of all is strictly the popular vote. One man or one woman Well, Hillary and one says vote. she has two million more than him. You believe? That there's know. an article that claims... I don't know. There's an article that claims that Hillary Clinton surpassed Bernie Sanders in the popular vote. Yeah. Honestly, with, with, with the looks of Bernie Sanders' rallies, I don't believe that. It seems impossible. You don't see Hillary Clinton with with the with n a fraction of the people at her rallies that exactly. Bernie has. Yeah. I forgot my friggin' hey. antioxidant rich tea here, man. Tea time. There's so much. I'm so excited about the West Coast being Sanders country that I forgot to pour my tea. But. Um, Anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. I think there's, uh, I think there's maybe only eight or nine more states to go. Yeah. Bernie has like 20, I think. You know what? I don't have any Chisler's Hall of Shame, per se, concerning, you know, uh, consume, being a consumer advocate. But, I will say shame on you Kentuckians made that comment about coal miners putting them out of work. Shame on you Kentuckians for edging out Bernie Sanders in the primary. Yeah. I mean, I heard she didn't win by much, but not by much. She he should have won by a landslide in Kentucky and uh, like like Bernie won in uh, West Virginia. Yes, exactly. So that makes West Virginia a poor a more poor state, poorer state than Kentucky, more intelligent than Kentucky. So, you know, you're stupid enough to live in a shack and vote for Mitch McConnell uh, and Rand Paul. And you and did now for sure I know you people are are fucking imbeciles 
for voting for Hillary Clinton. Uh, now you you should definitely when when the super volcano blows, you should definitely have a front row seat because you are a waste of sperm. The people of Kentucky, you're only good for is Churchill Downs where the Kentucky Derby is held and making bourbon whiskey. That's all you're good for. Uh, oh, and baseball bats. Uh, the Louisville slugger. Louisville slugger. The Louisville slugger. Yeah. Other than that, you have no value. Gabriel MacArthur is heading to the Democratic National Convention in July <laughs> arrest my voice. to serve as a delegate for Bernie Sanders. Uh-huh. Screaming and shouting are a distinct possibility from the Sanders camp at that event, he says. Oh, without a doubt, but do you ever see the mainstream media showing the Sanders people screaming and yelling? Nothing. MacArthur and other Sanders supporters are approaching the gathering with the enthusiasm that has powered the effort from the start holding garage sales, delivering pizza, raising money online to pay for their travel to Philadelphia. Garage sales? Hmm. Well, they're not selling garages. Yeah, it's a flea market inside the garage. Isn't that kind of like low class? That's Bernie people. Oh, the grassroots revolution, yes. that's right. Grassroots revolution. But there are nerves, are raw. Now, over the Democratic Party's perceived slights against the insurgent candidates. And they are clinging to a bygone hope that Sanders can wrest the nomination from Hillary Clinton despite her overpowering lead in delegates. You know, I found out Bernie does, can legally uh, run uh, as part of a, a third independent party or an independent uh, or, or if he wants to he wants to jump over where Jill Stein is in the Green Party that he could like all is not lost if Bernie Sanders loses the nomination you know that's, that's what I found out what do you mean all is not lost Hillary Clinton's president no if Hillary Clinton wins the nomination that Sanders can still be in the election sorry I, that's what election I over. That's what I read. Election over if she wins in the convention. Over. Period. He could run as an indie. Four years from now. Not now. He this, is, this is the election. He cannot be on the ballot is what you're saying. He cannot be on the ballot. Oh, he could probably, but you know what a job it is to get on 50 states as an independent? Even, Third party? E even with the people that are headstrong supporting with, Bernie yes. Sanders? Yes. And then... And then well, then, well, then, then your, your end time prophecy will be fulfilled then. If, if it's only uh, Hillary and Donald Trump, I'm telling you right now, I'm not voting for Hillary. So, you know what? No, hey, but you can, you, can, you can vote for Sanders by writing him in. Oh, all right. But he, what election. you're saying is he cannot be on the ballot. You can write him in, but he cannot be... You're right. He won't be on the ballot. It won't, won't you, you ballot. will not see Bernie Sanders, Jill Stein, Green Party. By or, the way, I do not think the Green Party is on all 50 states. Well, that's weird. I mean, when remember when Grandpa ran? I remember when... Uh, 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 Ralph, in New York? Ralph Nader was always running the Green Party. In the Green Party. Yeah. He was there. But I don't think they're on all four, uh, 50 states. Ah, so the two party system is fucking right. the independent parties. That's correct. Ah, that is correct. You they see, have it all sewed up. You, you see how everything is really rigged in, in, in your uh, wonderful capitalist America? You see how they have Democratic. Have you see how it's rigged? So, Democratic America. So the people over on Jesse Ventura's page are right. It is nothing but two sides of the same coin. That's correct. Crumbs. That's all it is. Crumbs. 
Remember the what, what was that? The god uh, Janus. Uh, it's a Greek. Two face. Yeah. Greek god. The two fa The facha. Uh, uh, the, the the two fachas. The two faces. Facha de bruta. To, uh, and du the facha uh, whatever. Duo Dewey facha. Facha, facha du facha Yeah. Two, the two face god. The two faces. Yeah. 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 As these super fans chant, Bernie or bust, Democratic officials are growing increasingly worried about the scent. That's Especially right, the scent. Where's my shillelagh? The scent. You could take that to the bank. Grassroots revolution, man. Bernie or bust, number one. Birdie power. The scent. Especially after a recent state convention in Nevada turned raucous. Well, they should have really rioted and kicked a lot of ass, but that, that, that really didn't happen. Some of the Sanders backers who are going to the convention as delegates for him, and there are more than 1,400, give party officials little reason for comfort. I don't think we're going to see a lot of violence, but we are going to see some screaming and shouting if the DNC doesn't humanize itself. Don't be too sure about what might happen at the Democratic National Convention. Yeah, go back to 1968. Don't be See there. what happened. MacArthur, a 24-year-old administrative assistant in suburban Denver, said the Democratic National Committee, a little civil disobedience is okay. It's part of being an American. Sanders delegates in more than a half dozen interviews say that while violence is not their goal for Philadelphia, party unity isn't their priority either. Screw the party. Screw the two-party system. They don't believe Sanders has been treated fairly by the party establishment. No, he's no, no. He's screwed over by the party establishment. Anything can happen, said Jessica Marie Butler. That's right. A Sanders delegate from Hawarden, Iowa, who volunteers for the campaign and is raising money on GoFundMe.com. Go fund yourself? Go fund me. Go fund me. For her trip to Philadelphia. This is a movement. This is a political revolution! Oh, is that where the Democratic National Convention is going to be held? Yes. I didn't know that. In Philly? Correct. Well, they better make a lot of cheesesteaks. It's a it's lot getting, of cheesesteaks. It's getting people involved in the process. We're going to stick to it. Clinton only needs 92 more delegates to lock up the presidential nomination. Clinton, Clinton didn't even really earn what she already has. It was given to her by the, the hawk-nosed, Jew-faced uh, Deborah Wasserman shits. A number she's likely to reach by June the 7th. Cuntzilla. The final major day of primary voting. She now leads Sanders by nearly 300 delegates. One in primaries and caucuses, an advantage that grows when including superdelegates or party officials who can back any candidate. It's like a, it's like if you're on trial back in the Middle Ages and the and the monarchs, you know, listens to your story and he he says, off with his head. No matter what your what your defense is. Most of them, by far, they say, will support Clinton. Still, Sanders has shown no interest in letting up, despite concerns of many Clinton supporters that he is undermining her as Republicans coalesce around Donald Trump. You know, I've learned, if I learned any, any lesson in 2016, I learned this, that there, there are more sell out whores than I thought it would be. There are, there are more people that have their price. Many 
of Sanders' delegates do not want him to give up. Joanne Fujoika, a Sanders delegate from Denver, said she did not improve, approve of the chaos in Nevada, where Sanders supporters shouted down speakers. The state party chairwoman later received death threats. Well, he got uh, Sanders got screwed in Nevada. Of course, uh, there uh, people were angry and shouting uh, them down. And thousands of uh, anyway, the audio in that uh, was crap. Yeah, and a Arizona too. He got screwed there too. Of course, people are angry. Uh, and she also received thousands of angry phone calls. <coughs> Rightfully so. Fujoika says Sanders supporters are determined but <coughs> idealistic and optimistic. We should do whatever we can to get him nominated, she said. We are in it to win it. Oh, damn right. Without acknowledging the reality that the nomination is essentially out of reach, the Sanders campaign has signals it signaled it will agitate for changes in the party's platform and procedures, which could also disrupt the convention. The DNC began discussing composition of the committee that would draft the initial platform this week, assuring both Clinton and Sanders campaigns they'd be fairly represented. Sanders supporters want the Vermont Senator's priorities, like a $15 minimum wage, stricter banking regulations included in the platform, an agenda that is not binding on the nominee. They also want changes in how elections are run, criticizing superdelegates and restrictions on primary voting. The acrimony has reached such a pitch that several Sanders delegates say they don't know if they can ever back Clinton. I don't see any scenario where I would support her, said David Johnson, a delegate from West Branch, Iowa. West Branch? But in the general election, it's a hard call for me. Nobody wants to see the insane Trump guy win. Yeah, but I'm, t I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get better. I get more better vibes, and I feel more comfortable, believe it or not, with Donald Trump than I do with Hillary Clinton. I don't know why. Some I th I have some some hunches uh, uh, on why. Um, gut feelings, but I, I cannot stand the woman. I despise her. Oh, so regulations? I read an article where olive oil companies are allowed to mix their olive oil with cheap canola oil and not tell you about it. <laughs> how about the fact that... Uh, <laughs> the regulations. How about the fact that uh, Italian olive oil is actually from Spain? You're correct. You're right. Greek olive oil. If you if you're buying olive oil and it says uh, and the company is uh, located in Crete, the island of Crete, well, what you're getting is concrete because uh, it's from Spain, man. Yeah. El cheapo. Yeah, it's yeah, cheaper yeah, to yeah. get it from Spain. But you know this is what this is what deregulated. Uh, right-wing controlled uh, America is about, is mm -hmm. uh, being able to lie to you, deceive you, and steal from you. Steal from you. Yeah, and it's about uh, us sending our chickens over to China and letting them yeah. uh, have their uh, fun with the chickens and then send them back here to be <laughs> sold. Even, even if they're chickens that are not healthy, that have died from illness, Chinese don't care. They process it and, and they export it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, everything dishonest is, is uh, uh, born out of uh, free market capitalism. Everything, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. unethical. Um, you know, uh, but what, see, what bothers me is, remember the video 
where Bernie Sanders tore Alan Greenspan a new yes. asshole? Why couldn't he do that with Hillary during any of the debates? Why couldn't he get tough like he did with Alan Greenspan? See, the problem is Bernie has still has ultra-liberalism in him. He's a pacifist, and he's afraid of being called a misogynist. Okay, that's why I think he didn't get really tough with Hillary Clinton, because he could have gotten really tough with Hillary she, Clinton. She would play the woman card. She would play the woman card. Ooh, your mean man is picking on little old me. Oh, he's a misogynist. He's a misogynist. Give me a break. And, and lay that guilt trip on him, and then he would have backed off. Wouldn't have worked with somebody who, who deals with the facts and the truth, like yours truly, but, you know, our bodies are constantly losing cells. That's true. Skin, hair, and we, I've heard that most of all of our body cells are replaced every seven to ten years or so. That is very true. Are we born with any cells that we keep throughout our life? Hmm. No, we're our whole body is, is constantly being renewed. Yes. The majority of the nerve cells in our brains oh. and spinal cords develop before birth. Oh, and they stay, right? And last for the rest of our lives. Okay, hey, I learned something new. So, so nerve cells, uh, uh, that's the problem with cranial like, post-polio syndrome because the, the you can't regenerate motor nerves. No, motor nerves they're do not dying, do not normally from the polio regenerate. They normally. don't regenerate. Yes. Right. Unless unless there's some kind of supplement they come out with that will, but um, or stem cell stem research. cells are yeah. a, a way to go. Hopefully, not that new nerve cells aren't added later much of them before the tender age of two tender age but then the neurogenesis process nearly shuts down that's what they call it the terrible twos now it's the tender age of twos the area in the brain involved in learning and memory does gain a bit is this disappointing it shouldn't be Maybe this retention of brain and spinal cord cells plays a major role in the phenomenon of humankind's stupendous intelligence. Also, the seven to ten year statement is a popular misconception. Different body cells are replaced at varying rates, some much more slowly than others. For example, heart muscle cells are replaced so slowly that even if we live very long lives, we still have the majority of those cells from when we were born. Hmm, interesting. Well, skin, I know, skin and hair are constantly being replaced. Yeah, skin and hair. Yeah. That's why the best... I mean, the best beauty, uh, cosmetic beauty uh, products that are available in, in reality is those that which are taken internally, essential fatty acids, <laughs> essential oils. Vitamin A. Uh, Dr. Udo Erasmus says that's the best beauty treatment. It's, it's far better than any uh, facial moisturizing cream. I am. Is the essential oils. Vitamin A, yes, vitamin A. Um, um, well, if you're taking A, you might as well take the A and D combination because they, they often come together. Um, D is, is crucial for the immune system. You know, it's not just a calcium absorbing vitamin mm. anymore. So. The diamondback terrapin. I know the, I know the turtle, yes. A photogenic species of turtle, considered essential to New Jersey's coastal environment, 
has seen its in-state population decline dramatically. Yeah, they live in marshes. They're a, they're a brackish, they are generally a brackish water uh, turtle. Yeah, very, they're very pretty actually. This week, in an encouraging development, the Christie administration put forth plans to stop that decline by proposing an indefinite ban on harvesting the species. I thought the decline of diamondback terrapins was because Chris Christie was making soup out of them all. <laughs> the levity bells. As staff writer James O'Neill reports, the shift in policy comes after two successive years when New Jersey's annual harvest season, November through March, has been cut short by the State Department of Environmental Protection. The toidal, the toidal soup. The Diamondback is the only turtle live to live in the Hackensack River. I did not know that. Oh, the Hackensack River receives uh, tide water. The, um, the water is partially uh, salty because the Hackensack River is, I think it, I believe it flows into the New York Harbor and the New York Harbor gets, salt water comes in there. Yeah, and there's crabs too there. There's crab. You wouldn't want to eat them, but there's there's crabs, uh, blue blue claw crabs, uh, which you know if you're a commercial crabber, you should really leave the females which have eggs in them. Ooh. You should throw them back. Ooh. You know. Uh, in the Meadowlands and New Jersey's other coastal marshes, Jack Cover, a terrapin expert and general curator at the National Aquarium in Baltimore described the proposed change as very welcome news. While some states don't have a lot of terrapin habitat, New Jersey has a lot of rich coastal habitat for terrapins. Yeah, because of the, the coastal marshes of, of uh, South Jersey. And if there's any place you could rup capture large numbers of them. It is New Jersey. I helped some some young baby terrapins cross a highway in, in a Little Egg Harbor, New Jersey. Uh, I'm sure they were very thankful. Well, they were because the locals didn't care. They were like zooming yeah, by. Yeah. They, nobody stopped for the terrapins. Terrapins play an important role in New Jersey's coastline from the Meadowlands to Barnicot Bay and Delaware Bay. They feed on snails that can overgraze marsh grasses, which can reduce coastal areas to barren mudflats. Well, even the marshes uh, near the Meadowlands in uh, northeastern New Jersey have uh, indigenous habitat that should be protected. I mean, uh, all wildlife should be maintained. Bill Sheehan of Hapkinsack River Keepers, who has observed the terrapins for years, describes them as a keystone species in our coastal marshes. See, I learned something new. I didn't know Hackensack River had them. I knew they had crabs. Um, well, the bridge, when you take uh, um, Federal Highway Route 46 East before you get into the um, when you pass uh, the town of Little Ferry and you're getting into the Ridgefield, there's a bridge there. Yeah. It's a very old, nostalgic looking bridge that crosses the Hackensack River. One of those metal bridges that make a noise when you go over it. Yeah, exa exactly. And yeah. they have the old yeah. lanterns, old style lanterns on them. And, the, um, you know, you have, uh, that's, a Hack that's the, uh, the brackish part of the Hackensack River. And then there's uh, a park in Leonia called Overpeck. Park. Yeah, very familiar with it. Overpeck Creek. 
What about Van Son? They have any in there? Over Peck Creek had. You, I used to watch seaplanes land. They, uh, there was a yeah, restaurant yeah. called Ed Frick's, the home of the Happy Lobster. <laughs> How on earth is a, a lobster that's being boiled to death? Drop them in the pot. Happy baby. is beyond me. But yeah, that yeah. was the the name on the sign. They had a they had a cartoon of a big red lobster smiling with his claws up in the air. Anyway, I digress. One reason for the Diamondbacks' steep population decline is an apparent surge in harvesting, in part to satisfy demand for the terrapins as a delicacy in some Asian cuisines. No, they'll eat anything that, anything that moves is food. In which they are often used in soups. And also, in some cases, because they are seen as having medicinal qualities. They use the head of a bullfrog. They, they don't throw anything away. There was a horrible picture the other day on Facebook of a rhino with its tusks cut out. You know, um, from poaching. Thanks to the greed of humans, I believe the black rhinoceros is now extinct. In, in a certain species of... You would think that the white one is. Well, the ry rhinos are are really endangered. No kidding. I, mean, I just really, they, really that endangered. people are taking their tusks for uh, aphrodisiacs. Elephants being murdered. Um, that's why I don't feel sorry if a male African elephant gets pissed off and, and tramples a hunter because let me tell you something once these creatures are gone you're not harvesting any more ivory and, and, and rhino horns because of greed yeah. in the past harvesting was limited in New Jersey conducted by small numbers of harvesters using hand methods in 2013 however a single harvester using a commercial crabbing dredge took more than 3,500 terrapins. That's pretty, that's pretty excessive. From two locations in southern New Jersey. Greed, man, it's greed. For sale overseas. Greed! Asian markets in particular have been profitable in recent years. To intervene is a positive course of action for New Jersey. Try to captive breed them, for God's sakes. They do it with shrimp and mussels. Reportedly, one of only three states left that allow a commercial terrapin harvest. And alligators farm them. As DEP Commissioner Bob Martin said oh boy. in announcing the indefinite pan ban, it's the right thing to do to ensure future generations can continue to enjoy seeing diamondback terrapins in the wild. You see, there's something about human greed that kind of blinds the logic of the thinking. You know, and it could be like multi-billionaires that are part of the oligarch, 1%, top 1%. It could be that... The, uh, c commercial fisheries is something about it that that blocks the ability to think logically long term there's never any long term thought it's called self interest but 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 how come when they you can't have think self interest you do not think of others no what about thinking long term even if you're even if it's selfish you're think not thinking of others but when the, when the species is gone, then there's no more to harvest. You're not thinking of others. Others meaning the species. Anything but besides yourself. Ca capitalism is for the individual. Well, if you're making money. Not others. If you're making money on the terrapins, and the terrapins become endangered and then extinct, there's no more terrapins for you to make money on. Obviously, they don't think that. Look okay. at look at what they're doing with the jobs here. They don't think about they're losing they're losing the market in the United States when they're trying to make the market in China. 
when Americans become more broke as time goes by, they have less money to spend, less surplus money mm -hmm. to spend yeah. in the United States. They don't put the money back into the economy. They just Well, they don't have it. They don't have it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They don't have surplus cash to put back into the economy. And they run the economy with 70 to to 75 percent of the economy is from consumers. They don't. They don't. They're lucky they have any money left over. No, actually, they're lucky they can pay their bills. Yeah. Today's average American is lucky they can pay for food, utilities, and a roof over the head. Okay. Let alone surplus cash to spend. Or like that commercial on television that says. We should start s saving early for our retirement. I got news for you, pal. You can't do it. That's what my that's what my aunt and uncle uh, exactly. My Social Security was never meant to be a, a you know a support you uh, as a, your only support. Yeah, Social Security was always, was only meant to supplement your retirement. Yeah. Well, if somebody has bucks. Uh, yeah, I guess Social Security will supplement your retirement. But most seniors don't have bucks. Well, when FDR signed the law, it was to pre prevent the elderly from starving to death. Yeah, well, then there goes your supplementation. Your supplementation uh, of Social Security checks. Making it sound like it's SSI. It's supplementing you. Yeah. Yeah. The harvesting ban, which now faces a public comment period, is a critical step for the Diamondback because it is already at risk due to predation, motor vehicle mortality, and habitat alteration. It also takes many years for the terrapin to reach sexual maturity, hmm. and the species is known to suffer from both a low birth rate and a low rate of survival to adulthood. Well, everything that's harvested today, and commercially, well, just kiss your bread and butter goodbye because they're all they're all going to be endangered. Bye bye species. Bye -bye. In short, New Jersey must do all it can to keep the Diamondback terrapins population stable. Not only to save a popular photogenic species, but to help maintain the ecological balance of the state's marshes and coastline. A ban on harvesting is a good place to start. Yeah. Well, I think farm raising is a good place. They did it with uh, American bison. They did it with alligators. They did. They, 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 do, they did it with many other harvestable uh, life. Yeah, I yes. know. I got your signal. I got your signal. I tell you, if they if they did another Batman movie, Doctor Bill should be should play Clock King. He is so fucking clock conscious. He's the opposite of Las Vegas, which doesn't care about the clock. Anyway, we're gonna break for lunch, and now you will be joined by our a commercial voiceover artist William Hamilton Morrow the third with promo and don't forget you will also see how to defeat a conservative Bible verses
because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need newsletter censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow the Third, with promo. We're back. Naturally, we're back because you see me saying we're back. So, do I have to remind you that we're back? I don't know. With the way Americans are today, with their lack of logic and brain cells, I think you have to lead them by the hand and by the proboscis. Seven bells, the lucky number seven. Let us go right back to our readings for this week's Progressive Discussions. It is the, I guess you would say it's the end of May 2016. We're getting there. I haven't seen 21st. any. I haven't seen any May flowers per se because this climate change is messing up all the plants. Mm -hmm. My herb garden is totally screwed up. Nice. The plants are all faked out. They don't know what is coming. With cold weather mixed in with warm days, um, uh, mild afternoons freezing nights and, and mornings and then it gets uh, goes back and forth my garden is screwed up honestly Hillary Clinton uh, had some of her strongest words yet for presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump Donald Trump will tear her apart saying that he is not qualified to be president in an interview with CNN, the likely Democratic nominee questioned Trump's ability to handle complex foreign policy challenges. Well, Trump is not prepared to handle uh, the realities of being president. I agree with that. But do we want to corrupt corporatists like Hillary Clinton? No. And the same old, same old? Same old, same old? Business as usual? Yeah decrying what she described as his irresponsible, reckless, dangerous comments. Well, yeah, you know, even though I can't stand her, uh, I do have to agree with her when she's right. Clinton cited recent comments from Trump criticizing Great Britain, praising the leader of North Korea, and questioning America's membership in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Really? She said she knows how hard uh, this job is and added that she had concluded he is not qualified to be president of the United States. Hey, when she's right, she's right. Trump responded on Thursday on his website saying, Clinton has bad judgment and is on sir unfit to serve as president at this delicate and difficult time in our country's history. So he's throwing right back at her what she said to him, like they're playing a, a handball, ping pong ball. It's going to go back and forth. A well, racket, racket ball. Racket ball. Um, Shoot well, for the head. 
Well, well, they have one thing in common. They they both uh, will do right by the rich. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. The rich will be very happy with either of them. Not the middle class. As they the usually poor. are with any president in recent times. Uh, yes. Tax cuts all over the place. Establishment. Establishment two-party system. Uh, lead, political leaders. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the, they serve the rich. That's true. Right. Only. Looking ahead to the general election, Clinton asserted that she will be the nominee. Oh, she's very, she's very certain about that. She's counting those chickens before they're hatched. Very arrogant statement. Noting her lead in delegates and votes over her Democratic opponent, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. She has that crystal ball. Or maybe she knows things ahead of time that the, uh, the suckers uh, in the mainstream don't know. That is already done in effect. There is no way that I won't be, said Clinton, huh. who is 90 delegates short of clinching the nomination. There's no way that she won't be. Though well, Sanders continues to win contests and has vowed to march on to the convention in July on divisions among Democrats, Clinton said she was committed to party unity but argued that Sanders will also have to play a role in bringing Democrats together. Oh, here we go. The party, the party, the party. See, this is what, like, when MSNBC interviews Bernie Sanders, they always throw questions at him about the party. Saving the party, bringing everybody in the party together. You recall that in 2008, after losing the primary to Barack Obama, she endorsed him and campaigned for him. Whatever differences we may have had, they pale in comparison to the Republican nominee, Clinton said. Asked if she should reach out to Sanders to work things out, Clinton said, I am absolutely committed to doing my part. Hey, she played dirty politics against uh, Barack Obama. Yeah, she did. Back then in, uh, was it 2008? Yeah. But, she added, Senator Sanders has to do his part. Ha, <laughs> ha, She declined to say whether she would consider Sanders for her running mate. I don't think Bernie wants her either. Sanders spokesman Michael Briggs disputed the suggestion that the primary race was over, saying it is clear that millions of Americans have growing doubts about the Clinton campaign. Clinton said she was ready to take on Trump, but vowed to keep the conversation focused on the issues and her record rather than personal attack. What's a personal attack to her? Somebody uh, bringing up the truth about Hillary Clinton reality? Or about Billy Boy. Or, or Bill, Cherry, Bubba, Cherry, Bubba. No, Cherry Nose Bubba, per, the pervert? Uh -huh. You know, you bring up the truth. Oh, personal attacks, unfair, uh, not nice. Uh, but then they could, when it's, in, when it's in their best interest, then they could do it to you. He can say whatever he wants to say, she said. Later adding, if you pick a fight with a bully, you know you are going to be pulled down to their levels. Mm. Well, they, they somehow do that. Clinton said she would not engage with Trump when he takes shots at her husband, former President Bill Clinton. And he will. No, I know that's, that's, exactly what he's fishing for. I'm not going to respond, Clinton said. Well, he will keep on taking shot after shot at the both of them. Both uh, Hillary and Billary. Donald Trump will do this. And uh, there's more to come. She's in for a rude awakening. But he will 
expose her and be rough with her uh, much more so than Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was not rough with Hillary Clinton in his campaign like he was with Alan Greenspan. He, he uh, held off, held back, and it, was, it was, has been actually quite nice. Uh, Hillary has just that much uh, dirt and skeletons in her closet. I mean, um, if somebody wanted to lower the boom, boom. on the Clinton boom. dynasty, it's not difficult. It's really very easy to lower the boom on them. On Monday, I attended the Edgewater mayor and council meeting to voice my opposition to the gassing of the geese in Edgewater. The gassing of the geese. Residents and non-residents participated in the open comment period imploring the borough to avoid gassing and to utilize the many effective non-lethal methods readily available. To show what intelligent, caring, sentient beings geese are, I recounted the story of a police officer in Cincinnati and his incident with a mother goose who was persistently pecking at his patrol car door and quacked. So? So? Intrigued, the officer got out of his car and she led him to one of her goslings who was entangled in the string of a balloon. Oh, like like uh, Lassie, like Lassie, like Lassie or Rin Tin Tin. And you, Timmy you used to uh, let people know, you know, somebody's in trouble. The, let the, you know, yeah, well, that, that's intelligence. <laughs> that's intelligence. Um, I told you that I, I when I used to go to the park. I would hand feed wild mallard ducks and they would gently take the food out of my hand by, by you know, putting their heads sideways and just gently, gently and mannerly taking the food from my fingers. <laughs> These are not stupid animals and, and so what if, if we're living with wildlife that is tolerating us? I don't, I don't mind uh, waiting for geese to cross. I think it's, it's kind of nice to have, you know, to see nature in your town. This officer and another untangled the baby while the concerned mother looked on. That's cute, man. The mother goose knew her baby was in trouble. Wouldn't we have the same concern and fear, fear, excuse me, fear for our children if they were injured and needed help? It's compassion, you know, it's like, you know, if you're an, and if you're an animal lover, you would understand. My words, and the, uh, that of others who spoke out against killing the geese, seem to go unheeded by the mayor and council. Did the mayor explain why he wanted to uh, euthanize the geese? Well, they always look for the easy way around. In other words, the geese would are looked upon like, let's say, homeless people. Exactly. So this guy, this mayor, would probably look at homeless people the same way. I don't want to look at them. I don't. I, I don't want. I don't want to look at them. Got to get rid of them. Let's gas them. Let's gas them. Let's uh, arrest them for vagrants and send them to a privatized prison. Yeah, and then they can work for free. Then they can work for free. Yeah. We need to have compassion and respect. For all life, killing is never the answer. I think it would be nice. I mean, uh, uh, I hear they they're they're in my town. I mean, uh, wild turkey. Uh, I already see the the mallard ducks and um, Canadian geese. Um, uh, I see hawks. I see uh, um, wild rabbits and you know the the typical stuff, <laughs> raccoons, possum, whatever. Uh, some say there are coyote. I haven't seen them yet in my town. But you know what? If there's if the wild turkey decide to walk around my street, I I, I, w I would think that's just great. I mean, the beauty of a, of the male when he, when he fluffs up his feathers and his 
his, all his big feathers come out and so what <coughs> so what someone needs to help me understand what's wrong with people these days he need he needs he needs somebody to help him understand he, we have a person not gonna happen Donald Trump who by all appearances is going to be the Republican Party's candidate for the office of president yeah but Trump is like honest about what he's about he's not he's not like pretending he's not like he's not like selling that's what they don't like he's not he's not selling you out and being sneaky about it like Hillary Clinton you know what I mean Trump is Trump what you see is what you get all right go ahead I'm sorry some high-ranking and influential members of his party have very real and serious reservations about having Trump as our president they say Trump would not only be disastrously bad but possibly even dangerous for our country Donald Trump made statements in the past that he is open to listen to the experts and to listen to advice from the right people. He says he's flexible. You know what? You're going to take science seriously, unlike the Republicans? You know what? I think Trump would take scientists seriously. I have a feeling he would. You know, he's not... He's not a, an evangelical imbecile like these Republicans. I mean, uh, well, he had to uh, you know? he had to say certain things and uh, pretend to be certain things to get the nomination. He had to make nice, nice religious with, nuts, which are like thirty-five percent of the party. He, he had to make nice, nice with the party to a certain yes. extent. Yes, to a certain extent. But now, when you go to the general election, now you have to appeal to independents. Now you have to appeal to uh, disaffected Democrats uh, and, and, and uh, the moderates in your party. Yeah, like he says, you know, not just like thirty-five percent. Uh, like when he tells people, like he's not, he's not like anti-Mexican or anti-immigration. He, he or anti-woman. He says they they have to g get. They have to come to this country and stay here, and they have to do it legally, through the legal process. But don't put all the blame on the Mexicans that work in the United States. Put the blame on the greedy American companies that are hiring the illegal immigrants and paying them shit. I put more blame on the American companies than I do on the poor immigrants. Because of their concerns, they have refused to endorse him as their candidate. This refusal has brought on them the ire and anger of other party members who believe Trump should be fully endorsed by all Republicans solely because he happens to be a Republican. Could you imagine if, since Trump, Trump uh, uh, legally has it all sewn up. Could you imagine them turning their backs on Trump and screwing him and giving the nomination to someone else? And well, they could change the laws of the convention. Trump, Trump. But I'm sure that would cause quite a quite a upset. Speak about a revolution. Trump, or Trump and his supporters would go ballistic. Yeah. What is wrong with yep. these clearly oblivious and unthinking people? <clears throat> At what point did it become more important to blindly support whatever candidate is put forth by a party, any party, than to use intellect, clear thinking, and common sense to decide whether a given candidate actually should be the leader of the free world? It is scary how some are like lemmings, throwing themselves off the cliff simply because that's what the party line would have them do. I have serious misgivings about anyone who blindly toes the party line without thinking for even one split second 
Heaven help us all if this is what it means to be a member of the Republican Party. You know, I was one of the, f one of the first people to use the word lemmings. And then all of a sudden, I saw, I, I, all of a sudden, Gary No used it. And now other people are using it. Well, it is a common... Well, a lemming is commonly known, but I mean a lemming, a lemmings in terms of uh, people uh, foolishly and blindly following Going someone. Going off the cliff, yes. Yeah. That's an, it's an old, you know. It's like saying a Pied Piper plays yeah. the flute and everybody follows him or something. Something like that. Anyway. The GOP insiders, led by Mitt Romney, are becoming outsiders and pose a danger to the future of the Republican Party. <laughs> Romney is a big disappointment. So both major parties are now in danger. And has proved to be... Well, good! I'm, I'm, I'm smiling. That's why I'm smiling. Jeez, it's about time. That's why I'm smiling. <laughs> oh, man. And has proved to be a traitor to his party. His deplorable behavior in 2016 race and his continuing personal vendetta against Donald Trump should make one wonder whether there is something more to his paranoia than meets the eye. I mean, with the Republicans, it was the insane asylum of every Republican primary, I mean, every Republican debate. It was one insane asylum after another. With the Democrats, it's voter fraud and corruption of the DNC. So, yeah, both parties are, what's the word, implosion, imploding? Hope so. Hope yeah. so. Deterioration, whatever term you want to use. <laughs> Romney and a cabal of insiders decided to lead a crusade in an effort to defeat and destroy Trump's candidacy. I like that word, cabal. Which proved to be an exercise in futility. Resistance is futile! <laughs> Romney will not admit defeat and continues to plot and scheme, threatening a third party candidate to compete with Trump. Romney is at odds with other party members, many of whom have endorsed and will campaign for Trump because they want to win in November. Yeah. Romney's concern about a Republican loss apparently was bogus because he no doubt is aware that a third party candidate would deliver a loss to his party in November. But apparently winning in November is not a priority. His priority is to make sure Trump is destroyed and defeated. Yeah, fat chance. Romney now contradicts himself because he says he is repulsed at the thought of Trump as commander-in-chief. Repulsed? But Trump! would have to win to become commander-in-chief. So, is Romney now worried that Trump might win after all? Romney is out of step with the majority of the party. He should do the party a favor and give up his membership now before he does any further irreparable damage. You notice how Today's politicians are very much like carnival snake oil salesmen or, 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 or infomercials for ridiculous products. They like, they just, they just know how to play that violin and, and embellish and exaggerate and, you know, they, they, they use emotion to rile the public up. The public uh, seems to be affected by uh, strong emotions. A 64-year-old cancer patient has received the nation's first 
penis transplant. Does it look like my shillelagh? I don't think he can get an erection just yet. What is it from a from a donkey or a, a, a horse? Probably a cadaver. No. Well, why not just get like a like a, a humongous uh, donkey dick? A donkey dick or something, Jeez. you know? Like uh, uh, I mean, if you're gonna have a penis transplant, you might as well have one like a porn star. A ground-breaking operation. I would do that. That may also help accident victims and some of the many U.S. veterans maimed by roadside bombs. In a case that represents the latest frontier in the growing field of reconstructive transplants, Thomas Manning of Halifax, Massachusetts, is faring very well after the 15-hour operation last week. 15 hours just for a dick? To attach a dick. Does it look like a ball-peen hammer? Does it look like my shillelagh? His doctors said they are cautiously optimistic that Manning eventually will be able to urinate normally and function sexually again. Well, the urination it depends on the uh, urethra. Urethra Franklin. For the first time since aggressive penile cancer led to the amputation Ooh. of the former bank courier's genitals oh my gosh. in 2012. The balls too? The testicles? No. The penis, you mean? I don't know. I'm reading. How can you ask for information we don't have yet? Okay, no problem. I, I'm sorry. I did not read this thing. Couldn't they grow one uh, using his um, DNA? Uh, uh, a laboratory-grown penis? I don't think that they're that far advanced today. Well, they, 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 they're growing internal organs. They said his psychological state will play a big role in his recovery. Emotionally, he's doing amazing. I'm really impressed with how he's handling things. He's just a positive person. Dr. Curtis Satrulo, who was among the lead surgeons on the team of more than 50, oh, gosh. said in a news conference. Yeah, how many, it's like how many people does it take to screw in a light bulb? My God. He wants to be whole again. He does not want to be in the shadow. Oh. Manning, who is single and has no children, did not appear at the news conference, but in a statement said, Today I begin a new chapter, filled with personal hope and hope for others who have suffered genital injuries. In sharing this success with you, it is my hope we can usher in a bright future for this type of transplantation. Well, it, it definitely would um, be th very therapeutic to the man's self-esteem. And I, I wish him luck, you know. I, I really, uh, seriously, you know, I mean, it's no laughing matter to be sick and suffer a loss, and uh, no matter what it is. But I wish him luck. The identity of the deceased donor was not released. The dick donor. The operation is highly experimental. Only one other in South Africa has a transplanted penis. Well, it's probably a lot of uh, native people that he can get a, a larger dick from South Africa. But four additional hospitals around the country 
have permission from the United Network for Organ Sharing, which oversees the nation's transplant system, to attempt the delicate surgery. The loss of a penis, whether from cancer, accident, or war, is emotionally traumatic. Yeah, I would say so, sure. Affecting urination, sexual intimacy, and the ability to conceive a child. Well, did, um, for those that want them, yeah. Many patients suffer in silence because of the stigma their injuries sometimes carry. Of course you can't tell people in I general. I got no dick. I have no dick. Dr. Satrillo said many become isolated and despondent. Unlike traditional life-saving transplants of hearts and kidneys or livers, Reconstructive transplants are done to improve quality of life. And while a penis transplant may sound radical, it follows transplants of faces, hands, and even the uterus. By the way, you see that woman who got her face ripped off by the, the chimpanzee? No, I haven't. I, well, not lately. The, it's, it's being rejected by her body. The face, the body is rejecting. They reconstructed a face. So the the body is treating it as like a foreign invader. Yeah. Even though it was e good for a couple of years, but now it's e even being rejected. Even though the even though when you lose something, instead of the body logically ex happily accepting what you've lost. It's a foreign substance or whatever. The body treats it as such. He, she has to take uh, anti-blocking. Yeah, drugs that to prevent that. But obviously, they're not working. Is this the same thing with more. organ transplantees? Oh, yeah, he, he's going to need them. This is why it's so important. Um, I mean, I'm, they really are growing from your own organs. Yeah. Yeah. They if really you can are. do that. That's much better. But. I'm sure it costs a fortune. Oh, it's reconstructive, yes. No, no, I mean like like the kid that needed um, um, a kidney transplant or liver transplant or something, young that kid. That too is expensive. But young that, kid, and they grew, they grew one from his DNA. Oh, well, that was good. That's much better. That's what I mean. Then you don't need the drug. Yeah. You know? This is a logical step said Dr. W. P. Andrew Lee, Chairman of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Oh, one of the most famous. His hospital is preparing for a penis transplant in a wounded veteran soon. And Lee said this new field is important for people who want to feel whole again. He could thank G.W. Bush and Dick Cheney for that loss. After the loss of important body parts. Yeah. Still, candidates face some serious risks. Rejection of the tissue. Oh, man. And side effects from the anti-rejection drugs that must be taken for life. Doctors are working to reduce the medication needed. Penis transplants have generated intense interest among veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan. But they will require more extensive surgery since their injuries, <coughs> excuse me, often from a roadside bombs, tend to be more extensive. Yeah. See, these, these poor souls, that brings my, my mother to tears like when she sees young Young people needlessly uh, maimed and disfigured. Well, like then don't this. vote for Republicans. Jeez. You don't vote for any warmongers, period. Or any warmongers in any party. Oh, I didn't realize it was that late. Uh, before we say bye-bye, uh, do you have one of those... Uh, for uh, Janet... J 
for congenital um, abnormalities or transgender surgery, doctors can fashion the form of a penis from a patient's own skin. Huh? Really? Using implants to achieve erection. Well, uh, yeah, but... But, transplanting a functional penis requires connecting tiny blood vessels and nerves. You gotta freaking just grow it in a lab for God's sakes. A bigger challenge than the surgery itself is finding donors that of organs. That, well, you know, of course, cadavers. Since no, people no. remain reluctant to donate their relatives' penises. Well, yeah. Well, if they if they die uh, and 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 meet up with their relatives again, their relative might beat the crap out of them, you know, spirit style. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, it's. I know that I know there are people that have donor cards on them. I don't know if. That and your means, license. I don't know if that means that whatever. Whatever needs to be salvaged from their body will be salvaged. I'm not sure. I don't put know it on the back of their license. I don't know how that works. Driver's license. Does that mean that any salvageable part? I of don't know. Maybe you just check one or two of them off. Oh, okay. You know, heart, uh, lung, uh, yeah. whatever. Who knows? Well, if they're if they're um, deceased uh, Republicans, uh, they could. Uh, You're yeah. certainly not a brain. It's certainly not going to be a brain uh, donation. Brain plant. Jesus. <laughs> Donovan's brain. <laughs> Remember that movie? Yeah. Donovan's brain. Jeez. Oh, My man. husband and I have been married for three years. Oh, we gosh. jumped through many hoops to be together. I thought we would be totally devoted to each other until the end of our lives. We are both in our 60s. Don't they all? A few months after we got married, I discovered that my husband was communicating with a hooker through email. A hooker? He was asking her to send him porn. Samples of herself? He said he would travel to see her and was just generally flirting with her. I found her phone number in his list of contacts. Yeah, well, I imagine she was a lot younger than him. Otherwise, why would he pay? I suspect they were having phone sex and going into chat rooms together. Yeah, hookers don't. Uh, hookers don't um, Their really time is money. Yeah, time is money. Hookers yeah. don't really uh, Mess with that stuff e either you make an appointment with them or you don't Basically when confronted with the evidence he said he was just flirting and To get porn from her if you got the money, honey I guess he said the there was no phone sex or if chatting money, honey just four or five emails. <laughs> he begged my forgiveness. Quack, quack. And promised nothing like this would ever happen again. I have no reason to believe he has broken that promise. He's a good man. And other than this one incident, he has been a wonderful mate. Nevertheless, I was devastated by the breach of trust. And have spent the last year trying to cope with my feelings of anger and hurt. I'm so disappointed in him. Am I making too much out of this incident? Would you consider this cheating? Well, if he, if if she's a hooker and uh, he mentioned traveling, I would say uh, it is uh, cheating in the making. Uh, potential. Yeah, I would say it's cheating if he's going to, like, uh, meet up with her. That's the way it feels to me. 
That's the way it sounds to me. This is Amy Dickinson's answer. Okay. I am not sure I would take this behavior as evidence of cheating, but it is probably evidence of stupidity. No, you should assume that your husband has probably done this before and may have or could still be corresponding with the other people. Yeah. You should try to determine if he has spent money on this woman. If it, if in, if it even is a woman. <laughs> well, there's so much, you know, fake on the internet. Well, you Come never on. know. You never know. There's a lot of scammers out there. Oh, my God. And they use fake profiles oh with, my God. with fake photographs. So you guys out there, beware. Beware. There's always red flags to look for. Uh, when somebody hits you up for money or favors that you don't know, that's a huge red flag. I would say. Right there. You should try to determine if he has spent money. Oh, I read that. It is possible that your husband fell for a scam where he was basically catfished and drawn into a cyber relationship where the ultimate goal was to get him to pay for porn or in rare cases to actually pay for the relationship to go away once it became burdensome or once you found out about it. Because of this breach of your trust, not to mention this breach of logic and good sense, he needs to be 100% transparent about all his communication and finances. You should meet with a marriage counselor with transparency and healing as your goal. You can recover from this but your husband needs to participate in mm, the process. Takes two to dance the tango. You know, can't fix things when only one half of the couple was willing to to save it and the other half doesn't want to save it. Hey, there's no construction sounds this uh, no, week. No, they completed it over there. Oh, they did, until the, yeah, until the next project. Yeah. Remember last Saturday, That's the horrible, like. horrible sounds. And no furnace. No furnace, no construction sounds, no obnoxious screaming kids outside and, 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 and stupid low-class adults making noise. All I hear is the gentle tweeting of the birds. The birds singing. I don't even hear that. Shillelagh transplant. Okay, that's it. Um, uh, when is the California primary, sir? Do you know? Uh, I believe it's the last one, so it must be either uh, June, July. New Jersey is the 7th of June. Really? Yeah. I don't know if it's a lone one or is there another state with it? Well, I'm sure as hell going to sneak a camera in there with me and I'm going to videotape my voting. Even if I, I, I'll put the camera in a shopping bag and, uh... I ask you to leave your bag outside. You wear a suit and you put it in the pocket over here. In other words... Wear a sport I, jacket. I wear a sport jacket of some kind that has an inner pocket or, or a nice pocket where it's not going to be seen. And I keep it on my person and then I will start it and announce my location which will be well don't talk to yourself I am outside I am now before you go in you don't yap while you're in the booth why not because well, they'll think you're nuts well maybe I am <laughs> no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to send somebody in there. No, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to continuously talk. I'm just going to announce my location. Yeah, before you walk into the, you know, to sign up and everything. 
Well, natural. Well, I can't. I can't turn the camera on on the outside of the booth. No, you wait. That, but, but you don't go in the booth to say. I am uh, now at. The, wait a minute. Wait. I am now at Hillcrest and I, Hunter. No, I know where at I the could, school. No, I know I could do it. I could do it outside when I get out of my car. That's what I just said. I pointed at the front of the school. Yeah. I am now located at. Uh, um, My voting Hilltop place. Elementary School in Lodi, New Jersey. This is the uh, New Jersey primary. This is uh, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And I and I turn to the corner of the street. I get the street sign. I go back to the front of the school. Then I stop the video. Place the camera in me jacket. Go inside find my name, sign it, they give me the little ticket, hand it to the guy at the curtain, I go inside, take the camera out, turn it on, vote, make sure I zoom in on the, the, the lights, on the buttons to make sure the right person is getting the Bernie Sanders uh -huh. is not switching to Hillary Clinton, yep. bada bing, bada boom, turn the camera off, exit the voting booth. Oh, are we oh. smart or what? Are we smart? Ooh. We are smart cookies. And, um, if my vote switches to Hillary, I will just say, son of a bitch, Ooh. motherfucker, son of a bitch. And that's Ooh. it. That's all I'll say. Shut the camera off, put the camera away, and tell them that my vote switched. And this is a rigged election, and I'm going to the media. You will feel the, f the full wrath of James P. Direct Madonna time. and his evil, oh, and his effective black thorn shillelagh. Now, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something about um, everybody should do it with their smartphones. Mm -hmm. I don't have a smartphone yet, but a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to do this. Um, you know what? That's it. I can't think of anything else to say. Fine, fine, fine. We'll see you. We'll see you. Say goodbye to these jabronis. Goodbye, goodbye, jabronis. And, we, and wish the Cal, uh, California luck. Californians. So, so Hillary is California dreaming. That the no, not, she don't think she needs a dream anymore. She's got it wrapped up now. But wasn't that the song for Maud? Betsy Ross got it all sewn up. And uh, then there's uh, Maud, and then there's Maud. Remember that? Yeah. Lady Cadaver was a freedom rider. Do, 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 do. That was one of the, the coolest uh, theme songs of, of, of situation comedies. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.